Okay, lesson seven. Lesson seven in unit eight brings about one of the toughest lessons that we do because we take a look not just at Taylor series, but what happens if we're using a Taylor polynomial and instead of a Taylor series, for convenience sake, how good is the fit? How far do you have to take a Taylor series before cutting it off there is good enough? So, some thoughts. Sometimes this is easy. Let's find a formula for what we're going to call the truncation error if we use 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed to approximate 1 over 1 minus x on negative 1 to 1 what would be a formula for the truncation error. And the truncation error is the difference between the polynomial and the infinite series. Because what we have is some infinite series, but infinite series go on for a while, so what happens if we chop that thing off? What if we say, you know what, I know from way back in lesson one that 1 over 1 minus x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth plus dot 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 on negative 1 to 1. What if I decide, you know what, it's good enough to chop right there. It's good enough. So what happens if I decide that? Well, then the error is the difference between this, the function that I'm approximating and the polynomial that I've used to approximate it. That's x to the fourth plus x to the fifth plus x to the sixth and so on in absolute value. Of course, that is a geometric series, so that's first term over 1 minus r then I know, okay, you pick your favorite value of x between negative 1 and 1. This will give you how far off you are from the actual retail price at that value of x. If your series is geometric, finding truncation errors is easy easy peasy because once you chop a polynomial off that series what remains is still geometric this is not the problem the problem is what happens if the series isn't geometric and if the series isn't geometric then we need this hideous thing this is Taylor's theorem with remainder. You will thoroughly enjoy this. I'm lying. You're not going to enjoy this at all. No one in the room believes that you are going to enjoy this. There is not one person. If I took a vote right now of all the people in the room, not one of them would say this is going to be enjoyable. Not one. You can't even hear them saying no. Well, it looks like this. If you have this on while you're doing cardio, I'm not reading it. Ha, 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 ha. So f has derivatives of all orders, which means if I want to find the 3,000th derivative of f, I can do it. And it has those derivatives in some open interval, call that interval i, containing some point we will call a, call it a. Then for each positive integer n and for each x in the interval, f of x is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared. Stop me when this looks familiar. 
plus the nth derivative evaluated at a over n factorial times x minus a to the n plus some remainder term. And the remainder term, this will be called Lagrange's error bound because it's named after the mathematician I'll just let that sink in. It's named after Lagrange. Get it? Get it? The remainder term is the n plus 1th derivative at some special point divided by n plus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n plus 1. That's a really freeing thing. I mean, I'm going to hit the the metaphorical pause button here because this is a very freeing thing. If I decide, look, I'm sick of this series, I'm chopping off right there. There are infinitely many terms after that, but the sum of those terms can be expressed as if it were one term. The trick is you do not know what C is. Very often, it is impossible to know what C is. And so what we do is we play a worst-case scenario game where we say, OK, at worst, what does that n plus 1th derivative look like? How bad could it possibly be? And then we say, I don't know what the error is, but whatever it is, it's less than worst-case scenario. Coach, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to explain that. Okay. I will tell you that the approximation for radical x plus two is two minus x minus two over four mi oh, it's plus minus x minus two squared over sixty four around x equals two. If we played the Taylor game where we wrote out a whole bunch of derivatives and we evaluated all of them at 2 and we did the f of 2, f prime of 2 times x minus 2, f double prime of 2 over 2 factorial times x minus 2 squared, we'd get that. I want to use the Lagrange form of the remainder. to bound the error when x minus 2 has an absolute value less than 0.1. That is to say, I'm only interested in bounding the error for values of x that are close to 1. Now, why does that matter? Because I'm only going to use the approximation when x is about 2. After that, it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I might as well recenter the thing. So, Lagrange error bound says that the remainder, when we chop off at the second order, the remainder is the third derivative evaluated at some special place over 3 factorial times x minus 2 cubed. And I should be proper here. This is the remainder term on the second order polynomial. Third derivative over 3 factorial times x minus 2 to the third. So I know, I know what 3 factorial is. That's 6. I know the most that this could possibly be. This has to be less than or equal to 0.1 cubed. And that, oh, I should change colors here just to distinguish it from that other thing. Because 
x minus 2 in the green little boxy thing here is less than 0.1 so at worst the x minus 2 cubed thing is less than 0.1 cubed Ooh, terrible 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 so I gotta know what the third derivative is I gotta know what the third derivative is at C and it just so happens that the third derivative is 3 over 8 times x plus 2 to the 5 halves. 3 over 8 times x plus 2 to the 5 halves. You can crank that out in the privacy of your own home, which, as we've always said, is your own privates. So what happens now? What happens now on this... <sighs> on this inter that didn't help on this interval how bad is that that really didn't help so the x values are making our denominator get bigger or smaller so if i choose a small value of x then the denominator is small and the fraction is big. If I choose a big value of x, then the denominator is big and the fraction is small. So this, this is as big as it's going to be when x is 1.9. And so I know that I'm going to do F triple prime at 1.9, which happens to be 0 0.012484 over 3 factorial times 0.1 cubed. And that's 0 0.0000208, which is, in the parlance of mathematics, pretty good. Pretty good. When we use the Lagrange form of the remainder, we deal with worst case scenario. What's the most that the next derivative could be on our interval? What is our bound on x minus 2? And we just sub everybody in. So, something to consider. Let e to the x be approximately 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Uh, I mean, it goes on, but we, we have to approximate at some point. And let's let the absolute value of x be less than 0.5. Let's pretend that we're only concerned about x's between negative a half and a half, because we centered at 0 in the first place. Estimate the error. And I'll get you started on this, OYO, because I like you. The remainder term on the third order is going to be the fourth derivative of e to the x evaluated at some special place divided by 4 factorial times x minus 0 to the fourth power you now have two questions to answer. What is the most that the fourth derivative of e to the x could be between negative 0.5 and 0.5? And then, what is the most that x could be between negative 0.5 and 0.5? Once you know those two things, you substitute them, you have estimated error. Wonderful. I will see you tomorrow.